Well, hello again and welcome back to my series investigating the ARM Cortex-M33 core. It's week 14 and this week I'm back to looking at the DSP acceleration feature for the third time. It's called the Power Quad and this week I'm going to look at the Fast Fourier Transform. Those of you who were with me in week one will remember that my son plays a classical guitar. Here it is hanging up in his bedroom and as a test of the Fast Fourier Transform on the LPC55S69, I asked him to pluck one string and to record it on his phone and not tell me what string he plucked. And then I'm going to use the power quad on the LPC55S69 to identify what string he played. Well, I'm going to use the power quad DSP accelerator in the LPC55S69. And in particular, I'll use the transform engine. The transform engine is capable of making a number of transforms, including the fast Fourier transform. And note that it's a fixed point FFT accelerator, and so all of our data will need to be in fixed point today. We saw last week that the interface for PowerQuad is really, really simple. All we'll need to do today is to set the format for our input, our output, and our temporary regions, and we'll need to pass pointers for these areas. And so the out base register will be a pointer for the output. The temp base pointer is a pointer to the temporary region in private RAM. And the in a base pointer is the base address for our input data. So six registers to set up there. And then in other registers, we'll need to use a control register to say we want to use the transform engine. We'll set the length of the data that we're passing in We'll do a 512 point FFT today. And so here is my workflow. My son played one of the strings on his guitar. I don't know which one he used. He recorded it on his phone and gave to me an audio recording. It's a mono recording and sampled at a rate of 48 kilohertz. It's a 32 bit floating number. So he gave me that audio. I took it from his phone and imported it into Audacity on my Mac. There's the samples in Audacity and here it is playing for you. I have a little bit of work to do in Audacity. The data was sampled on the phone at 48 kilohertz, but I want to downsample that to 4 kilohertz. The reason I'm doing this is because of the frequency bins in the output FFT. The width of the frequency bins is determined by the sample rate divided by the number of samples. Of 4 kilohertz and 512 bins, that means that each bin is about 8 hertz wide, which gives me some precision. And so I've downsampled the audio clip from 48 kilohertz to 4 kilohertz. And then I've truncated the data because I only need to process 512 samples. And so I've clipped the audio samples to 512 and exported it as a text file. I was then able to import the text data from Audacity into Excel. It's just a table of floating point numbers. You can see it in the guitar column just to verify I've got the right data, I've plotted it using the chart function with Excel, and that's floating point data in Excel. Now, because this is real world data and it's truncated, I've applied the Hanning window. You can see that in red in the graph, and this removes any discontinuities at the beginning and the end of the data. So after applying the Hanning window, I've got a floating point number, which represents the 512 samples. But the power quad transform engine requires fixed point data. It can be either in Q31 or Q15 format. So it's a 32 bit integer or a 16 bit integer. I'm using Q31 types in my data. And the transform engine only uses the first 27 bits of any integer numbers. So we have to scale it into a 27 bit wide value. So I've done that here and then exported the data as a text file. In the text file, I've converted the values from column format into this row format. And in Word, which is a tool I used, I just replaced the paragraph markers with commas to make it into rows. And then I've split it into eight values per row. Well, now we can move into MCU Expresso. So I copy the data from Word 
and create a new project in MCU or Expresso IDE. I just use the new project wizard to create a new project based on the LPC Expresso 55S69 SDK. And at that point, I added the power quad driver, the same as we saw last week. And then I've pasted the data from Word into MCU Expresso as an array. You can see it here. It's a int32 type. The array is named RFFT Guitar Hanning 4000. It's of size 512 entries and it's structured as an array with the opening and closing brace. I've written three lines of code. It's the hash include FSL power quad dot H. I've defined the length to be 512 and I've created an output array of length times two for the resulting output. It needs to be length times two because the output from the transform engine for the fast Fourier transform generates a complex number for each input value. There's some more code to write. So we initialize the power quad with the power quad init function. And then I've printed out a message. And here is the configuration for power quad. All of my data types are integer 32 bit values and none of them need to be pre-scaled. The transform engine will scale any input values by n the number of points. So all of the data that's input to the transform engine will be divided by 512 in our case. The transform engine allows us to scale our input and our output data. I don't need to do that today. You can see that I've passed a pointer to address E0 million as a temporary pointer that the power quad can use for intermediate results. Finally, we call the power quad transform function. It's power quad transform real FFT, and we pass in four parameters. It's a base pointer for the power quad, the length parameter, which is 512 samples in this case, and there's a pointer to the input data, our FFT guitar Hanning 4000, and a pointer to the output structure, our FFT result. This will implement the fast Fourier transform and we'll just wait and poll until it's done. When the FFT is complete, we'll print out the results. Now remember that the fast Fourier transform has a complex output with both a real and imaginary components. The data structured in memory first with the real value and next with the imaginary Q31 fixed point integers. So I'm printing the two elements, the real and the imaginary elements per line in the output printf. We can watch the output being printed from the LPC 55S69 into the terminal window. And I'm just outputting the first 128 complex numbers. And the final step is to copy the data from the terminal window and paste it into Excel. Again, it's just column formatted complex numbers can see that in column B here and I've added a column for the bin value and I've created column C magnitude which is using the magnitude function in Excel to create the magnitude of the FFT values. Note that they're scaled by 2 divided by the number of samples. Our final step is to use the charting function within Excel to plot the FFT output Remember that the FFT outputs reflected about n divided by two. And so it's really only necessary to plot the first n divided by two points. And in fact, in Excel, just for readability, I've plotted just the first 128 points. You can see the magnitude on the Y axis and the frequency bins on the X axis. And we can see the peaks in magnitude, which represent the string that's plucked and the harmonics. We can see the peak here at a fundamental frequency of about 142 hertz and a harmonic at three times that. Well, the FFT from the LPC 55S69 power quad is showing me very clearly that there's a fundamental frequency of about 144 hertz. If I look at the tuning of a guitar string, and here is some data from Wikipedia, I can see the frequency of each of the six strings. And here is D3, as the guitar string D, at 146 hertz. So there we are, that completes my investigation into power quad. 
Today it seems like my son plucked the D string on his guitar and I was able to use the power quad on the LPC 55S69 to identify that from an audio sample that he took. Now, did I mention that the LPC 55S69 from NXP has two Cortex M33 cores? These are running at 150 megahertz, and so next week I'm going to investigate their dual core architecture on the LPC 55S69. I hope you continue to find these videos interesting, and if you do, please subscribe to my channel, like the video, and share it with your friends. That's all. I'll see you next week. Goodbye.